Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a drama, history film called, Hitler, The Rise of Evil. Part 2. Spoilers Incoming. As Adolf Hitler is moved to his prison, he is well taken care of by the guards and Hess is there for him and serves as his secretary. Adolf suddenly thinks of creating a memoir about himself while he is in prison, and he asks Hess to write for him. Writing a memoir does seem like a good idea but he needs someone to publish his writings. At Ernst's home, he tells his wife about his plan on moving to America to find the best doctors that can treat their daughter's unknown sickness, but as Helena finally feels relieved of Ernst's plan for their family, all of a sudden Ernst's presence is being asked by Adolf. Ernst goes to meet Adolf and there Adolf asks him to publish his writings, but Ernst refuses since their company only publishes art books. He also adds that he plans to move to America with his family since their daughter is very ill. But Adolf threatens Ernst by spreading the news about him being involved with the Nazis and eventually damaging his name. Ernst refuses to talk back at Adolf and Adolf continues his writings in prison until he is finally released after nine months. One Christmas night, Adolf surprises the Hanfestangles and visits them. While Ernst is upstairs attending to his sick daughter, Adolf kneels in front of Helena and tells her how he deeply admires her. Ernst sees them and interrupts their conversation, leading to Helena and her son going upstairs. Adolf then informs Ernst about him leaving and going to the countryside in Obersalzburg to meet with his half-sister and niece. On the day he finally sees her half-sister and niece after so many years, Adolf is greatly astonished by her niece Jelly's beauty. He cannot help but look at her all the time even though he is talking to a new publisher who will publish his memoirs. Hess suddenly informs Adolf about the upcoming elections and his party wants to know who is he going to support, and Adolf tells him that he supports Ludendorff even though he is expected to lose. Back in Munich, Fritz continues to ramble about Adolf and desires to continue to write about him, but his boss refuses since Adolf is a thing from the past and he wants Fritz to move on. The results of the recent election yielded a great win for Hindenburg, and this news prompts Adolf to order a meeting in Munich with his party as well as him bringing along his niece to the city. As Adolf comes back, he first meets with Ludendorff and he suddenly vents out his anger towards Ludendorff and blames him for the failures that had happened at their party. Adolf's remarks hurt Ludendorff's feelings and hence he revokes his relationship with Adolf. Adolf continues to meet with his party and there he finally meets Joseph Goebbels who is also a great speaker like him. In the meeting, Adolf informs Rome about bridling their group and letting the SS protect the Nazis instead of them. This angers Rome and he and his men officially leave the party. After the meeting, Adolf talks to his party and officially announces that the leadership will be cast upon him once again and they will continue to fight and achieve the goal of winning the elections. Meanwhile, Ernst and Helena hold a burial ceremony for their youngest daughter who died at only the age of four due to an unknown sickness. Two months had passed, and the Hanfestangle holds a dinner party with Adolf invited. At the party, Goebbels informs Adolf that he can only run for president and get citizenship if he acquires friends in the Reichstag. While talking with Goebbels, Adolf catches sight of Helena and he approaches her. Helena tells Adolf about her still thinking about the loss of their daughter and Adolf suddenly asks Helena to work as a hostess to raise funds for his group, to which Helena agrees. With the help of Helene's great hostess skills, funds are being raised for the new headquarters of the Nazis. Ernst praises her wife's skills and asks her to go out with him and spend their time together at the cabaret, but Helena refuses since she also has to work late for Adolf. Their conversation leads to Ernst drinking alone at Friedrich's place but Friedrich kicks him out since they do not serve Nazis in his bar. Adolf continues to do his speeches again and meets with the people to gain popularity. Alongside all his plans, Jelly is always there watching him and she gradually falls for their chauffeur Maurice. As Adolf returns, the cruelty of the Nazis towards Jewish people is clearly seen in town and this annoys Fritz since he cannot write about them anymore or else he'll lose his job. Sophie calmly talks to his husband about him losing himself due to him starting to grow great anger towards Adolf. During a photo shoot, a beautiful woman named Eva Braun tells her admiration for Adolf and his niece. Adolf then catches Jelly and Maurice embracing one another inside the car, and this causes Adolf to hurt and almost kill Maurice. Jelly finally bursts out her feeling of despising her uncle since Adolf doesn't let her do anything and so she demands to go home but Adolf refuses. Another election is held, and the Nazi party finally gains the second biggest party in the Reichstag, and there they all enjoy their growing popularity and success. Hess suddenly tells Adolf about Jelly attempting to escape and ride a taxi away from Munich, but she is caught by Adolf's men. Adolf meets with Jelly in the car and tells her to not be stupid and he forcefully kisses his niece. As Jelly goes home, the pressure from her uncle is too much for her to handle and so she finally ends her life using Adolf's gun. Upon hearing the bad news, Adolf is speechless in seeing Jelly's lifeless body in front of him and he continues to mourn Jelly's death while demanding Angela to leave Jelly's bedroom untouched. 
In the year 1932, Adolf finally claims his new German citizenship, and a presentation of his new poster is shown. Eva Braun comes to the Nazis' headquarters and expresses her admiration for Adolf in front of many people, and this act of Eva touches Adolf's heart. Meanwhile, theaters start to show films about Adolf and his ideologies, and while watching one of his films, Fritz's passion for writing about Hitler returns and so he starts to write on the front page of the newspaper again with Adolf as the headline. Seeing the newspaper, Adolf is furious and wishes to take down Fritz and so one of his men throws tear gas inside the press printing company where Fritz works. This incident leads to Fritz losing his job since his boss worries about their safety. On the other hand, Eva colors her hair blonde to mimic Jelly in an attempt to replace Jelly in Adolf's heart but Angela tells her that Adolf will never love Eva as much as he loves Jelly. With his passion for writing about Hitler still surfacing in his heart, Fritz thought of writing articles in the Nazis' printing press since Adolf would never destroy his only printing press company. As another election ends, Hindenburg once again wins the presidency and defeats Hitler. Even though he lost the election, Hitler doesn't worry since he is confident that Hindenburg will give him a position in his government since all the right-wing faction is in favor of him. At his office, Hindenburg then designates Franz von Papen to be the new chancellor under his government, and Papen suggests that they give Adolf a position that they can easily control, which is the vice-chancellor. Adolf meets with Hindenburg and is informed about letting him be the vice-chancellor but Adolf refuses since he wants a higher position, which is to be the chancellor. Hindenburg is furious at Adolf's request and tells him that he will never give him the position of chancellorship under his government. During a Reichstag meeting, the Nazi board members walk out and their actions resulted in a sudden mandatory re-election. Hindenburg is annoyed by the Nazis and thinks that they are just making fun of his government, so he appoints General Schleicher to be the new chancellorship since he blames Papen's suggestion being the reason for the mass walkout of the Nazis in the Reichstag meeting. Meanwhile, Fritz successfully writes an article that mocks Adolf's features and the article is even put on the front page. At the Hanfestangel's home, their maid Frieda reads aloud to them the news article about Adolf which amuses her, and upon hearing it, Helena gets angry at Frieda and tells her to not bring Jewish propaganda articles into their home. At night, Adolf meets up with Papen to discuss their plans to persuade Hindenburg to put Adolf in the position of chancellorship, to which Papen suggests that he writes a public letter in the newspaper about his appreciation towards Hindenburg. As expected, Hindenburg falls into their trap and he appoints Adolf to be his new chancellor. Back at Adolf's place, Eva experiences the same torment as Jelly, and there she decides to shoot herself to also end her own life. Fortunately, Eva is brought to the hospital on time and Adolf tells her that she must promise to behave from now on. After the official declaration of chancellorship is bestowed upon Adolf, Nazis line up while holding torches to celebrate Adolf's declaration. At the Nazis' press printing company, a man named Georg Bell meets with Fritz and tells him about being an ex-Nazi who used to work for Rome. He wishes Fritz to write articles about damaging information that he knows about the Nazis. The next day, Muller who is in charge of the Nazi printing press calls Fritz to inform him that he is displeased by Fritz's articles. Sophie overhears their conversation and she tells Fritz that she is scared for their lives but Fritz still insists on writing articles against Adolf. The article that contains the information given by Georg Bell quickly circulates throughout the town and leads to Adolf completely thinking of Rome as an enemy since the article is about Rome being against Adolf. As Rome leaves the room, Adolf's men tell him that his enemies are increasing in an alarming number and so Adolf devises a plan that can invoke legal action for him to get what he wants. Adolf then hires a man to burn the Reichstag building and after the incident, Adolf and the Nazis spread false information that a Dutch communist created the fire. Adolf then proposes a new constitution to Hindenburg regarding the recent terrorist attack that burned the Reichstag building, but the approval of the Reichstag members must first be needed for a new law to be created. At the Kroll Opera House, Adolf announces his proposed constitution which he explains as a necessary procedure against terrorism but it is actually an excuse to let the country be a police state that prohibits freedom of speech, association, and press with Adolf being the ruler. On the other hand, Georg comes back to inform this news to Fritz as well as another truth about the Nazis having relationships with foreign investors even though their principles is all about the purity of Germans excluding other race. With Georg's life at risk, Fritz lets him meet with a friend he knows can help keep him safe. Back at the meeting with the Reichstag members, half of the members are furious about Adolf's sudden change of constitution as well as passing the power from president to chancellor. The argument comes to a halt as one of the Nazis sings the German national anthem and with everyone singing, it had been unanimously decided that Adolf's new constitution shall be passed. At the same time, Nazis barge into the press printing office while Fritz is writing a letter for Hindenburg to make known the information about the Nazis. As Fritz is being detained, Georg is also being chased by the Nazis and he eventually falls to his death. 
Numerous men and Jews are held captive and killed by the Nazis, which leads to wives looking for their husbands and creates a national problem. Adding to this, prisons in Germany start to fill up and Adolf suggests that they use concentration camps to put more of their prisoners there. Amidst the chaos happening in Germany, Fritz never gives up and writes a letter to her wife which will also be his last. With blood running throughout the streets, the wealthy people all enjoy their afternoon together with a beautiful view. Ernst then asks Adolf to let him and his family go on a vacation, and Adolf agrees as long as he will return. Ernst tells her wife of his good news that they can finally live a whole new life far away from Germany, but to his surprise, Helena refuses to go since she already thinks that Germany is her home and Adolf is a person she can believe in. As the death of Hindenburg comes, the office of the president and chancellor is then announced to be made as one and so Adolf will fully lead Germany alongside his military forces. These dark times in Germany results in numerous individuals fleeing Germany and marks the start of the dark reign of Adolf Hitler throughout Europe and the inhumane acts of slaughtering Jewish people and individuals who are against his governance. And in the year 1945, Adolf Hitler finally lost the war which leads to him committing suicide in his Berlin bunker, but the terror of his ruling years will forever be written in our history. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.